Hi friends, I'm Anna Hellman. Thanks so much for being here today. I've been playing around with a stamp set here the last couple of hours and I'm so excited to share it with you. Don't know about you, but trees and leaves are some of my favorite things to stamp on projects, besides flowers, of course. But I have this leaf stamp and I've been playing around with different ways to use it. I wanna share with you, I think I have 20 different techniques and ideas for ways to use this particular stamp. Now these techniques are ones that can be used on any stamp. So you can use these on stamps in your collection, but I am loving the way this is turning out with this particular stamp. And I would love you to watch along and see what we're going to create. The stamp we're going to be using comes from the Soft Seedling stamp set and this lovely large leaf right here. So here are a few cards I've created with it and I'll show you a couple of these techniques as we go through this video. This is one, I love this technique where you get the multiple colors on the stamped image. I stamped this on vellum in particular, but I uh, thought this turned out really nice. So I'll show with you, share how to do that. In addition, uh, here's one, I just stamped the leaves just with some Calypso coral ink onto this designer paper. I thought that one turned out really cute. It's a stamp set that can be used so simply, just stamp it just with a single color of ink and it's beautiful. Or you can do all of these fun techniques like what I'm going to share with you. Now here is one, I'm gonna share this as well. I did this with pastels and it may be a little bit hard to see, but I'm gonna use some colors on the one I demonstrate here in a few minutes that will be a little bit easier to see. Okay, I took a break for a second. I realized my camera was crooked. I can't handle that. I don't know about you. I don't want you to have to look at that the whole time. So let's get started and I'll share. Some of these are really simple ways to use this. Some get stepped up a little bit, but if you watch along, most likely you are going to learn one thing or hopefully even several. Here is one thing I wanted to share with you. I wanted to show you what it looks like just to st if, if we're gonna stamp several of these leaves in a collection. And I also wanted to mention that, that we always think about leaves at fall time, but these are, this is a stamp that can be used all throughout the year. Leaves are perfect for cards for men uh, and we don't have to use those fall, co fall colors. Uh, you can use leaves for sympathy cards. Like there's lots of reasons to be able to use leaves on your projects. But I wanted to show this with non-fall colors and share a cool technique. So you can see what it looks like with multiple colors. I used crumb cake, mossy meadow, and I'm not sure what that third color is. I think it might be pear pizzazz. But before I started, I cut my paper down to eight inches by 10 and a half inches. And now I'm going to cut it in half. So you can see how I stamped down the center this way and the center this way. Now I'm going to cut at four inches and five and a quarter inches. And we are going to end up with four card fronts that are prepped and ready to use. So we could just stamp a greeting down here or we can make these a little bit more elaborate if we want to. We could add some mats, some layers, a punched out greeting, uh, maybe some die cuts. We could do a lot of different things, but uh, aren't those lovely? That's a really nice technique you can use with any type of stamp. So we'll start with that. Now I'm going to bring in my stamp apparatus. This is one of my absolute favorite stamping tools. If you haven't seen the Stamparatus before, uh, I'm gonna link to several videos down in the video description below as we go here through here. If you want more information on uh, lots of these things, I will have information. So a link to the one on the Stamparatus if you want any information. I love this tool and you're gonna see it in action here quite a bit over the next few minutes. So what we are going to do, we are going to ink up the stamp, we're gonna use it in several different ways and show you some fun techniques. So what I wanna do first is we are going to, we'll ink this up with some Calypso Coral ink. We're gonna use lots of different colors as we go through here. And I want to play around with some blending brushes here. So I'm going to use one blending brush to remove a little bit of ink, which if you've noticed, the stamp is designed to stamp with different kind of intensities or densities. I, I'm not sure what the uh, word is, but basically to look natural. So there's lighter areas and darker areas. You can see that very well here 
on the front of the stamp case. So that is the way it's supposed to look. Uh, when, I know sometimes when stamps look that way, we think it's a mistake, but this is designed to be that way. So put some Clips of Coral ink on here. I'm gonna use my blending brush and my, my intention with this is to actually remove a little bit of that ink to make it even a little bit lighter. And now I'm going to come in with another color. I have some rich razzleberry. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that over here and I'm gonna go around the edges and apply some of this to those edges. Now, anytime you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you use your darker color second, uh, because most likely my blending brush is picking up a little bit of that color from the stamp, and I wanna make sure I'm not getting like purple ink on my yellow blending brush, for example. Okay, so let's stamp this and see what we get when we ink with Clipso Coral and then remove a little bit of that ink from the center and add a little bit of rich razzleberry around the edges. Oh, isn't that beautiful? This, this stamp I just think is amazing and it's gonna be really fun to go through here and show you some different techniques. Now I'm just gonna stamp each of these once, but can you imagine if you had a card or a scrapbook page just covered in these? I mean, that is just beautiful. Okay, let's move on, let's do another technique. We're gonna do a few here that are similar. Uh, next I'm going to ink my stamp with Granny Apple Green. And we're gonna use our markers for a technique. I hear from some people who have a hard time inking stamps on the Stamparatus without getting ink everywhere. These larger stamps are a lot easier to ink than some of the smaller ones. Uh, but if you do have problems with that, you can try the, uh, the smaller ink pads, the Stampin' Spots are good ones to try if you do have problems with that. So what I'm gonna do here is just, I'm gonna start kind of at the base, the stem, the stem end, we'll call it, maybe I should call that the top, not the base. And I'm gonna come in and add some of these deeper colors towards the top. And I can already tell these aren't going to be terribly well blended, so we'll see how this comes out. Uh, this is my darkest, and I'm already breaking my rule. I should have done my middle color first, which is my garden green. That's this one right here. So I should have done this one first in these middle areas, and then done the mossy meadow last. But let's see how this comes out. If you ever have problems with your stamp rod, it's not stamping over here towards the hinges. You, I've shared several tips to solve that. Uh, one thing, you can just add a couple of layers of cardstock underneath just to raise your paper up just a touch and usually that solves it. So this is really, so this is really fun. Can you see that color variation there? I think that looks really nice. Let's do another one with a similar technique. So we will ink up the stamp. We do need to clean it off first. We will ink it up this time with, I think we'll go with some Cajun Craze ink. And then I am going to play with the colors with some sponge daubers. So here are my daubers. The colors I am going to play around with are Mary Merlot and Early Espresso. I thought, I'm really excited about this. I think this is going to be a really nice color combination. So there's the Calypso Coral. Now I have daubers. I'll pick up a little bit of color. And daubers are nice. You can get your color. I'm gonna do the Mary Merlot this time because that's the next darkest color and then the early espresso last. So the daubers are really nice because you can get your color in a little bit more specific areas than you can with the blending brushes. So I'm gonna do that Mary Merlot kinda in the centers. And then let's add some early espresso. I'm gonna do this on the tips of the seeds and of the leaves. And let's stamp this one. Let's stamp this one on some crumb cake just for a little variation. And this one gets a little darker, so it's a little bit harder to see that color variation. 
uh, but it maybe if we lightened up the colors, uh, that's, that's another one you can try to get some of those different colors mixed in. Okay, let's see. Oh, we're gonna do a similar one here actually. And you know what? I'm not gonna clean that off. We are going to get an extra use out of that ink that is already on that stamp here. Now you could apply fresh ink. You can apply your ink with one color. You can do any of these techniques I've shown you with the blending brushes or the daubers, any of those. But what we're gonna do is bring in a water spritzer. And I'm kinda, kinda, kinda cover this up with my hand for a second. You could use some grid paper. I just don't want water over here. I'm gonna apply, we'll go with three, three spritzes of ink. Water, water, not ink. You can play around with more ink, more water, less water. Uh, but here, we start to get kind of a watercolor appearance. And see, I, there wasn't much ink left on there, but when you apply that water, it, it really stands out and shows up. So that's a really fun technique. You could do some really, really neat things with the spritzing technique. Now, now I think we need to clean our stamp off. So I will work on that. And this next one is kind of fun. It's been a long, long time since I've shared this. And this is a technique I don't really see. I, I don't really see it very often. So hopefully, uh, maybe you'll learn something. Maybe this is gonna be a new one to you. But for this one, I have already stamped it. I'm gonna bring in what I have already worked on. Here is my very well used Stampin' Pierce mat. It's a product that a lot of people don't realize uh, Stampin' Up still carries because it's not in our catalog, I don't think. Uh, but this I'm going to call hand embossing. So I have my take your pick tool, love this thing. Uh, I'll link you to videos in the video description with this and like all the coloring tools and the Stamparatus, lots of these I have really in-depth videos on. But the Take Your Pick tool, one of the pieces that inserts into it is this handy little stylus. It has a larger ball tip over here and a smaller one over here. So you can choose one or you can use both. I'm gonna use the smaller one and I'm just going to press. Now you need a foam surface underneath you for this to work. But what I am doing is pressing and when I flip this over, it is going to look embossed, kind of like if I had used an embossing folder, but specifically in the shape of this leaf. Now that I have gone over just the veins, and before we started, I did the stem and the seeds and the top half of the leaf. So now I'm finishing the bottom half. I went over the veins with that smaller tip, it's a little bit easier to get those to stand out with that. Now I'm going to go over the rest of the leaf. And I like to use a circular motion because if you use, if, if you go back and forth, a lot of times those lines will show up on, on the other side. So we'll try a circular pattern and see how this comes out. But I just wanna go over this whole area, pressing the whole time. And I'm gonna flip this over, see if you can see what it looks like. And if you can't see right now, hopefully here in a minute, you'll be able to. So can you see that leaf and the seeds and the stem standing out? Now, let's go one step farther. We're gonna bring in our blending brushes again. And see if I need to get some ink. I'll pick up some Calypso Coral ink here. I always blot the excess over here on my scrap paper and then I'm going to start really lightly on top of that leaf with that circular motion and as I do this those raised areas are going to pick up that color. So this is kind of a subtle technique. It's not going to be as defined as if you were actually using an embossing folder, but it's something kind of fun to try if you haven't done it before. Okay, now let's look at a few that I have stamped with some white ink. I haven't 
been sharing a lot of projects using the white ink lately, but you can really do some neat things with the white craft ink. Um, this is what it looks like. And I put these in my Stamparatus and I stamped two or three times to get a little bit deeper color. Now I probably need to re-ink my pad. So if I re-inked it, maybe I would only need to stamp one time. But here you can see what it looks like just stamping in white, which was really neat. This would be a really neat effect just by itself. But let's look at a couple ways to use these then. Here is one that I ran through with an embossing folder the timber embossing folder, and then I use my blending brushes around the edge, but that's a really cool effect. Uh, just like that, you know, that's pretty simple to create and would create a really, really stunning card. Then I have several more of these I have done, and let's do a little bit of coloring. What we can do when, when you stamp with the white onto colors is your colors are gonna stand out a little bit more. So let's try coloring on some of these and see what kind of results we get. I probably won't color the entire thing, but uh, you can get an idea of, of what this may look like if we would finish. So I tried these and I thought that this white ink might come off if I started coloring with my different tools. This is one of my blends alcohol markers. I love these things. Uh, you can do really amazing blending with them. And I just thought I would color with this. And at this point, I'm kind of wishing I chose a brighter green so that it would stand out a little bit more on top of that white. But this is an idea of something you can try is to go over with those blends markers, add some color, and it's going to stand out more than if you had just colored directly on that cardstock since we have that white ink in between. Let's do a little coloring with the regular markers. These are our stamp and write markers. And I love about these that you can re-ink them with the same ink refill bottles that you can re-ink our stamp pads. So when you're spending money on your craft supplies, it's nice when you can get multiple uses out of things uh, with an ink refill bottle that just costs a few dollars, you can re-ink your stamp pads and your markers for years to come. And, and that's not ex exaggeration. Those ink refill bottles last a long, long time. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of a yellow color. I think I chose, I should have chosen a deeper yellow also. Uh, but if I want, I can come in and add some oranges here. My orange is going to show up a little bit better. I can go over the veins. I can go maybe highlight around the edges with this. But this just gives you, gives you an idea that you can play around with some coloring if you want, if you like to color. I know coloring is something some of you love and some of you, we couldn't pay you to do it. It's not your thing, but you can try that. Watercolor pencils, uh, these are nice. I you, you can get a lot of color variation with these just by how much you press. So if you press lightly, you'll just get a little bit of color. If you wanna get a lot of color, you can press harder. Uh, these are another one that I, a lot of times when I'm coloring, I use a circular pattern to try and get even color. And I did not try this on top of the white, but something else you could try if you're coloring with these pencils to blend that color out is to use the blender pens and go over this. And typically those blender, blender pens are gonna help to smooth out the color and make it look perfectly smooth. I'm not sure how they work on top of the white ink, so you would have to try that out. But this is another idea for you to try. Okay, let's see what is next. Oh, I'm gonna mention this real quick. If you like this type of a video, how to use a certain stamp with lots of different techniques, I shared one not too long ago with this stamp, and then there's another one in the same stamp set that's similar, it's of a church. But I shared lots of cool techniques for how to use these. If you'd like to see this, it is the piece, piece to use, the name of the stamp set in the video, and I'll link to that down in the video description below as well. Okay, this next one, this is fun. This is exciting. 
These next few are really going to be neat. We are going to ink this time with some Versamark. And I will show if you do heat embossing, we'll talk about heat embossing in a moment. That is not what we are going to do this time. We are going to start with a different technique. But I'll ink up with Versamark, stamp this, and I am going to clean my stamp off here. That Versamark ink is so sticky. I don't really want to let that dry on my stamp. I want to get that off pretty quickly. And then I'll show you what we are doing here. This is the technique with the chalk pastels. So I'll bring them in so you can see them. I actually have this in my embossing additions, my, my toolkit for embossing. Uh, the tray for this is what I'm using, but here are the pastels. And what I have done with a few of the colors, I just held them right here. And this is one of the attachments for my take your pick tool. The one that I took out when I put the embossing part in the stylus. And I just shaved this with the spatula to get some of these shavings down here. Makes it a little bit to pick up some of the color. And I have some daubers. So I am going to pick up some of the color with the daubers and just start applying this over the leaf really lightly. I don't really have a plan for where my colors are going. Plans are good and I probably should have had one, but you know what? We just, we just make things up as we go sometimes, right? So I'll put some yellows in. We'll mix a little bit of green in over here. What's fun with these is you can blend your colors. So I needed some brown one day. I was doing a pheasant. Uh, that is a tutorial I have shared that was really fun. But I did a pheasant in the same video where I created that card I showed you a few minutes ago, the dark brown one right here. So this is the same technique. Uh, I know that's hard to see because I chose dark colors, but uh, I had done a pheasant and I was blending colors to create brown since I didn't have brown. And it, it turned out really nice. Gonna put some purples around the edges here. And you, you can play around with this as much or as little as you want to. So I think I'm gonna come back and add some red. Maybe just go over the entire thing now with red to sort of blend some of it together. Red is a nice color that's going to blend with all of these. And then after I'm done, I am going to flip it over, over my trash can and give it a little flick with my finger. A couple of flicks with my finger to get some of that extra chalk off. Now, if you see the extra little color around the edges, it does kind of glow. And if you don't like that, you can go around with your finger or with a plain dauber and get some of that off. Typically, some of it's going to stay and you, your image just has a little bit of a glow, but isn't that a fun technique? Love to play with these pastels. Now, if you have questions or if you're interested in any of these products I'm talking about, they're all linked down there at the bottom of the video description with ordering links. Okay, I think we're gonna do, let's talk about heat embossing and some similar, similar techniques. So this is one I did with heat embossing because of course this is beautiful. I love heat embossing and the way it looks on projects. If you don't know he, what heat embossing is, stick around a second. I'm gonna show you a very similar technique that is done in a very similar way, but we have different results. So I will show you basically how to do heat embossing here in just a second. Here is one, it's, you probably won't be able to see this at the moment, but I have heat embossed that leaf with clear embossing powder onto this piece of designer paper. I'm going to use some Evening Evergreen ink and apply over the top. And this is a technique called 
Joseph's coat. If you have heard of that before, you know what is going on here. If this is new to you, uh, it's really cool technique that I just love to do this. I haven't done it a lot. I did it on that, the nativity cards I just showed you. I did create one of these, one of those this way. Otherwise, I have not been using this technique a whole lot lately. So the fun part about this technique is whatever you put under your image, when you emboss that with the clear, it will still show. And when you put a darker color of ink over the top, all of those things in the background are going to fade under that dark color of ink. So I could keep going. I will not do this probably quite as long as I would typically, just to save a little bit of time here. But once you are done applying your color, you want to grab a piece of tissue or a paper towel or something like that. I'm going to use a baby wipe carefully because that's what I have right here. And just run over those embossed areas because there's some ink on there that you don't really want. You wanna get that off so you get your nice bright appearance of that image. So isn't that cool? I thought that would be really neat with that flower paper underneath. Okay, now if you're curious about heat embossing or if you wanna see like an even more fun way to do a heat embossing type effect, we are going to do that now. And after this, I think I just have two more techniques to share with you, but they're ones with some really fun effects. So I hope you'll stick around until the end. So let's bring the stamparatus back in. We need to stamp this with our first mark again. And I will mention when you are embossing or doing this technique, I'm getting ready to share with Gilded Leafing, if you're curious. Uh, this is an embossing buddy. It comes with our Embossing Editions Toolkit. You really wanna go over the surface of your paper with this first. If you don't, it is very common for extra powder to stick in places you don't want it. And that just doesn't look as nice as if you only have that powder where you are intending it to be. So let's ink this with First Mark. and we will stamp. If you want, you can do this a couple of times if you're using your stamparatus, just to make sure you have it inked up really well. Now, if you don't have the stamparatus or another stamping platform, it, it is difficult, uh, potentially impossible to stamp in the exact same place, but with this tool makes it really nice. Now I am going to dump some powder over the top. If you were embossing, at this point you would dump your embossing powder. So for this one, I had used copper embossing powder. And for the last one I used clear. So you can put the color of your choice over top. Now for this one, I am double checking. Yes, I am using a product called heat and stick powder, which after it's heated, is going to turn very, very sticky. So after I cover that, I like to give it a little flick on the back side. I will be able to dump my extra powder back in here from that coffee filter. And we're going to need to heat this up with the heat tool. So pick this up with my tweezers. Hopefully you can still hear me here, but I will heat this up until it all melts. I'm gonna hold it close, so maybe you will be able to see as this melts. It's a little bit difficult to see. And now, quickly, 
I'm going to get out my gilded leafing. I probably should have had this ready first, but I am going to put this inside. This is my container for gilded leafing. And if you're wondering why there is a toothbrush there, you, you will find out soon. But I want to rub this over the top and get some of this to stick into that powder that is melted. Now, I was a little bit slow. I did get some of it to stick, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna heat it back up for a second and we'll try this again. We'll do this in stages. This is one that may be good to do little bits at a time because it's hard to heat up your entire project at the same time. But we'll do little bits. Now I'm gonna heat up over here where the seeds and the stem are. This gilded leafing will stick to any type of adhesive. So I have used it with, like I just put some tear and tape adhesive on my project and put this over top or put some glue dots on and put it over the top. You can use it with glue. You can use it with all, in lots of different ways. And actually I have a tutorial on, I don't know, 10, 12, lots of different ways to use it. Uh, but this is a fun way. Now I can see that leaf a little bit. Can you see that coming through? This probably would have worked a little bit better if I had re-inked and stamped a couple more times. But, I and I think also if I used it on regular cardstock as well, but you can get the idea. This is a really fun product to play around with that gives you a beautiful gilded look uh, when you get done. So, okay, I have one more I wanna show. It's simple, it is not, nearly as involved as the gilded leafing. Clean off my hands just real quick and wipe up the gold flecks we have. I like to do that all in my container. That's why I have it in a larger size container so that I can do all of it inside of there and keep the flecks inside. So last but not least, it's always fun to stamp on designer papers or specialty papers. So we're gonna try one. We'll see how this comes out. We are going to stamp some stays on ink uh, because if we wanna stamp on any kind of glossy paper or paper that's not really absorbent, uh, we're gonna wanna use something like stays on. So I'm gonna stamp this. You may have noticed, I don't really use my magnet a lot on the stamparatus and I'm gonna try this again. Do you ever have fails? I do. So this isn't working. I've tried this before and I thought it worked, but apparently uh, today it doesn't wanna work. Let's try this on some foil paper. This should work, right? Just a reminder, things don't always go as planned in the craft room and when it doesn't go the way you want, just roll with it, just keep going. There we go. Now I didn't get the centers of these two leaves to stamp, so let's try that again. And that's a little better. Let's try this one more time. I don't wanna get it too dark, but I would like to get the centers of those leaves to stamp if possible. Very nice. So here's another fun technique to try. So. There you go, my friend. No, it totally figures. I forgot to show you this one. I said I was going to show this card right here, how to do this technique. So I did all of the others and I forgot this one. So I'm gonna insert this in so you don't miss out. But here you can see the finished result on some vellum. What I did, and this has been sitting here for about a day. I actually 
uh, re-wetted this with my water spritzer. So it looks a little bit different than it will when you do it fresh, but I used some ink refills and I put, I folded a baby wipe in half, put it in a stamp case, and I just put drops of ink onto the baby wipe until it was solid in an area at least as big as the leaf. Now this has all soaked out and in the last day. So you can, so, so it doesn't have to be fully covered when you do this. But after you get your area, the size of your stamp covered, you can use this as your ink pad instead of an actual ink pad. And the benefit of this is you get those multiple colors. So the colors I used for this were Mary Merlot, Cherry Cobbler, and Cajun Craze. So I'll ink this up and stamp right here. And you can see uh, that lovely color. Now this is lighter than it will be when you do it at the beginning, when you do it when you've just inked your pad. But isn't that a neat technique? I just think this is really cool. So lots of ideas for how to get multiple colors of ink onto that leaf. Hopefully you saw something that you wanna try or something that you learned. Uh, again, this is the Soft Seedling stamp set. If you're interested in this, or any of the tools or techniques that I have shown today. There are links for lots of them down in the video description below. There's an arrow over on the right side. If you could click that little arrow, the description will drop down. You'll be able to see it there. So thanks so much for watching along. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.